Echo. Fairy tales are wonderful, magical stories that capture children's imaginations and delight and entertain them. Well, maybe today at least, but in some of the original versions of fairy tales, recorded by guys like the Brothers Grimm, fairy tales play a little more like installments from the Saw franchise. Listen. You know that Cinderella has a magical encounter at the ball with the prince, right? And she leaves her glass slipper behind, which he later uses to identify her. Well, in the Brothers Grimm version of the story, which they recorded in 1812, it's a little darker. Cinderella's wicked stepsisters try to get in on that glass slipper action by carving off some of their feet so they can jam it in there. Luckily, some pigeons that happen to be hanging out nearby point out all of the blood and the wicked stepsisters are found out. Later on, those same pigeons poke out Cinderella's wicked stepsister's eyes at her wedding. Cinderella is not the only fairy tale to feature step family brutal revenge action. At Snow White's wedding, the party goers force Snow White's wicked stepmother to put on searing hot iron shoes and dance around until she collapses and dies. Whoa. In the 1940 Disney version of Pinocchio, the little wooden rascal gets into a little bit of trouble with some shallow vices like gambling and fibbing. But in the original version, written in 1883 by Carlo Collodi, Pinocchio turns totally Patrick Bateman. He bashes his good friend the cricket with a hammer, killing him. You're familiar with the contours of the Rapunzel story. There's a girl who's trapped in a tower by a crazed witch. She has freakishly long hair that a prince climbs up and hangs out with her. Well. In the early version, Rapunzel's hair is climbed up upon by the prince, sure, but while he's up there, he apparently gets her pregnant. After the crazed witch finds out, she goes berserk, cuts off Rapunzel's hair, banishes her to a desert, and forces the prince to jump from the tower. He, apparently being unaware that he's in a grim fairy tale, fails to cover his eyes on the way down and lands in a thorn bush. His eyeballs are, of course, gouged out. If we're going with the 1827 Hans Christian Andersen version of The Little Mermaid, no one in their right mind would want to be part of your world. In this telling, the sea witch traps The Little Mermaid's voice by cutting off her tongue and putting it in a shell for safekeeping. At the end, the mermaid is given a choice of turning back into a mermaid by stabbing the prince in the heart and bathing her feet in his blood after he splits on her for somebody else. What's your favorite grizzly fairy tale? Let us know in the comments section below. And head on over to HowStuffWorks.com to read 10 fairy tales that were way darker than you realized as a kid. And don't forget to subscribe to What the Stuff.